Welcome to our spatial learning video series, where we'll use the power of spatial computing technology to take learning to the next level. Wherever you are, we're excited to go beyond your TV, textbook, or computer screen and blend learning experiences into our physical world together. Alex here, and today we're going to be learning about climate change and sea level rise. Really important and very timely issues for us right here in Florida as hurricane season sets in, but also a really important issue set for the entire globe. The most important thing that we can do to become really active in this conversation is to become educated about it, to become well-informed. And we can go beyond TVs and textbooks and actually dive into the power of spatial computing with a terrific application called Climate Change by Xenial Digital to become really well informed about this issue and what needs to be done about it. We're going to first learn the very basics of what causes climate change or global warming. And then we're going to look at a few different scenarios that could happen over the next 80 years that have very serious implications for our planet. And last, we're going to do a deep dive into one particular variable, sea level rise, and see how the rise of the seas will change depending upon what happens with respect to climate change. Let's get started. We've got our friend Sim over here, and she's going to introduce us to climate change. Here's some important information to help you understand global warming. Planet's atmospheres trap heat through a phenomenon called the greenhouse effect. As the Earth's carbon dioxide concentration increases, its atmosphere thickens and traps in additional heat. This is known as global warming, defined by scientists as a gradual increase in Earth's overall temperature, generally attributed to the greenhouse effect. Both natural and anthropogenic activities contribute to global warming, which ultimately causes climate change. The change in climate, characterized by changes in regional climate patterns, has detrimental effects on our entire planet. Scientists use data to predict future climate scenarios based on the level of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. These levels depend on assumptions about the world population, economic growth, energy consumption, and land use. Scientists call these predictive scenarios, representative concentration pathways, or RCPs. RCPs show the trajectory of carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere, caused by different levels of emissions. The four RCPs in this experience illustrate possible outcomes for the 21st century, from an optimistic to a pessimistic outlook. Because of the increasing level of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, more sunlight is being absorbed by Earth than radiated back into space. The difference in this energy is called climate forcing, which is measured in watts per square meter. Each RCP indicates the amount of climate forcing in that scenario. Understanding this relationship is the first step to reducing our carbon footprint. Let's get started. I already know how the application works, so we can skip the tutorial there, as well as here. And we can just jump right into it. As we can see, we are not looking at a textbook, but we are looking at good old planet Earth right here in my room. We can walk around it, and we can see all of the different continents and the oceans. Let's stay focused for now on South America, North America, and above it, the Arctic, and below it, the Antarctic. Now, about those RCPs or scenarios, we've got them laid out over here. The one that we're gonna focus on to start is a regular scenario. Regular means it's not wonderful, it's not optimistic, but it's also not catastrophic. In this scenario, what scientists would expect to happen is that we take some actions to limit our carbon footprint. And emissions, carbon dioxide, still rises at a slow and steady rate, stabilizing after the year 2100. So that's about 80 years from now. It's not ideal, but it could be a lot worse. Graphically, 
that would be indicative of this green line here. We want to see as low a level here as we can because that means that climate change will have been mitigated much more than in the nightmare scenario that we'll come back to, but not as good as an optimistic case that we'll pass on for right now. Now, if we go back to our map here, I mentioned that what I want us to focus on for this experience is sea level rise. What we're going to do is we're going to actually overlay data on top of the globe here that is speaking to sea level rise all around the world. The dark blue, as we can see measured by this line over here, indicates that there's been very little increase in the level of the seas since the year 2005. And that's a good thing. The higher the sea level gets, the higher the likelihood of flooding and other natural disasters. So we're gonna bring us back to the year roughly 2020, doesn't need to be exact, and just do a quick scroll around the globe. We can see that there is mostly dark blue all around us, which is what we would want to see. Stable, healthy levels of sea level rise, or not sea level rise. <laughs> but even in a regular case, which is generally pretty good, let's take a look at what would happen to the Atlantic Ocean over here. We go further up, let's take a pause in 2060 or so, and we'll see that the water color has changed. That means that we have now increased the sea level by a considerable amount. And even especially along the coastline, that dark red is really not where we want to be. And as we go even further ahead to 2100, we now are yellow, meaning we're right around here with an increase in sea level rise that pretty much is across the globe. It's not a pretty picture here. And this is not even in the worst of cases here. But I want you guys to keep this in mind because we're now going to get into something that's a lot more dire and what we all need to work together to try and avoid. Let's shift over to our nightmare scenario. Music is not pretty because it's not a pretty picture. Here, we do absolutely nothing to reverse our current situation, and instead we continue exacerbating it, meaning making it worse. This results in emissions continuing to increase, that is carbon dioxide, through the early and mid parts of the 2100s. And that is a really, really difficult and scary situation. Graphically, that's this line up here, where climate change impact is really, really extreme, much worse than what we saw before in the green. Let's now return to our globe and dive in to sea level rise again. Let's pause time right around 2020. And again, we are in the present now. So the damage or lack thereof is done. Fortunately, we're still in a situation, even in a nightmare scenario, where the world is mostly in this dark blue, meaning that we haven't seen much increase in sea level rise since 2005, all things considered. But if we fast forward to 2060, for example, to start, we're into that light blue, which we don't want to see. And we even start seeing some yellow, indicating that the sea level is really increasing quite dramatically, especially around the Antarctic over here, as ice caps melt much more aggressively. And certainly the same happening up in the Antarctic, where we even start seeing some red and yellow as well. And now let's take it all the way forward to 2100. And remember, this was all yellow in that regular scenario. And where do we think we're going to be 
in the nightmare scenario by 2100. In that deep red, all the way over here. And this is what we don't want to have happen for our planet, guys. Because what this means is that we run the risk of global flooding, of tsunamis, of typhoons, of hurricanes, really, really catastrophic stuff for our planet. And we can work together through the knowledge that we're gleaning from this experience and other things that we do through school and at great places like the Boys and Girls Club to get better educated about this issue and what we can do to stop it. But now you guys can see just what's at stake in our lifetimes. And hopefully you take this knowledge and drive forward as an advocate to mitigate climate change, both here in Florida and around the globe. Thanks so much.